Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a magic uh, spell system. I think that's what it was called and stuff. Um, It's going to be featuring a grimoire. I wanted to differentiate between my two videos. Like my other video will be like magic spells. Like you're just like you're pressing E and like your character says like a spell out loud or something, you know? Um, and yeah, that's what I wanted that to be. But this system is like, you know, you have like a great, you equip a grimoire, right? Like Black Clover. If you've seen Black Clover, it's like that. You equip a grimoire and then you're able to use spells and stuff. So it's going to feature the book and stuff. So yeah, happy Thanksgiving to everybody and stuff. I mean, by the time you're watching this Thanksgiving is, you know, it was yesterday. But if you're American, you know what I'm talking about. If not, have a good day. But anyway, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. Okay. So first things first. Um, what we need to do is we need to um first i need to go over some stuff with y'all so first things first we have the grimoire if you don't know what the grimoire is it's just a book it's like what wizards use and stuff for like spells and stuff y'all already know i got this from the toolbox go to the toolbox find a grimoire right put it inside of replicated storage because we're going to duplicate it and clone it over on the client side so that the player can equip it right then the then this fireball attack because obviously i need a, a spell right this i got this from the toolbox as well i don't know when or where because I, I like this is from a video on my how to make a basic fireball attack up, the updated version from like almost a year ago so i or maybe a year ago i don't know so i don't like the point is i got this from the toolbox everything i got from the toolbox and then i, I put it yeah i put it in server storage right then of course i have some sound effects and equip sound when i equip the grimoire and the fireball sound effect again got these from the toolbox yeah should, i think y'all are seeing the pattern so let's open up starter player open up starter player scripts i have a hold animation again got this from got this from the um toolbox and stuff right this is like hold animation which is which is kind of for me it'll be the equip animation right so i'm going to insert a local script into starter player scripts you're going to put your animation inside of local scripts you click the plus icon and then click animation to insert it and then of course put your, put in your id you have to use your own animation id and then name it accordingly and yeah let's go ahead and name the script magic script in parentheses put local All right we're going to delete print hello world and we're going to need to make a couple of variables first let's create a variable for the user input service so local uis is equal to game get service user input service then let's create a variable for the sound service so local ss is equal to game get service sound service right then let's create a variable for the local player is equal to game dot players dot local player create a variable for the uh, remote event which we need to create so head on over to replicated storage click the plus icon insert a remote event you're going to want to rename this event to magic event then create a variable for it so local magic event is equal to game dot replicated storage wait for child magic event then we're going to create a variable for if the grimoire is equipped or not so local grimoire if you don't know how to spell it that there you go is equal to false here so we're going to keep track of whether or not it's equipped or not right and then we're going to set up the first function uis dot input began connect function in parentheses put input comma processed enter then set up an if statement if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard and not processed, which pretty much means the player is not typing in chat. If input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code, I'm gonna go with E, but you guys can go whatever you want. Enter. Here's how we're gonna equip the grimoire, right? We're gonna say if grimoire, if grimoire. Oh my bad. It's supposed to say grimoire equipped, but yeah. So if grimoire equipped, enter. That means if grimoire equipped is equal to true. So if they have the grimoire equipped. Then, of course, we're going to set it to false because we're about to unequip it. So false, right? Um, then we're going to create a variable for the player's character. So character is equal to player dot character. Then you're going to say character dot left hand because that's where we're going to parent the grimoire to. And then you're going to say dot grimoire. I feel like I spelled this wrong. Grim. Oh, I. Oh, yeah, I spelled this wrong. Yeah, grimoire. Is it? Grimoire. Wait, hold on. Okay, it's have to make sure I didn't end it. Okay, hold on. G R I M. Bro, I literally had to look it up. I was making this the first. Okay, grimoire equipped. There you go. Okay, then just copy and paste it to update it. Okay. So yeah. So that grimoire, right? And then we're going to say destroy. Right. Then we're gonna set up an else if. We're going to say else if not. 
grimoire equipped, which means the grimoire is not equipped. Then, of course, we'll say grimoire equipped equal to true. Then we'll do the same thing. Create a variable for the player's character is equal to player dot character. Then I'm going to uh, clone over the grimoire. So we're going to say local grimoire is equal to game that replicated storage dot grimoire clone, right? Then I'm going to say grimoire. Um, so what I did was I created a world constraint inside of the part, made the part zero. I set the part zero equal to the grimoire, and part one is going to be the character's left hand. That's how I set this up. But you guys can set it up whatever way you want. So I'm going to say world constraint dot part one is equal to character dot left hand. Now keep in mind this is for R15. If you're using R6, you would want to put left arm instead of left hand. If you're using R6, do left arm or right arm. It, you guys don't have to do left. It could be right. It doesn't matter. But the point is you would put arm instead of hand if you're doing if you're R6. If your game is R6. But if you're R15 like me, then just leave the hand. Then we're going to set C frame. So grimoire pivot to we're gonna set it c frame now this you guys may have to adjust the numbers as need be this is going to work for me because for this specific part it's going to work but you guys may have to adjust the c frame so i'm going to pivot it to the character's left hand c frames times c frame dot new one comma zero negative negative zero point five comma zero then times c frame dot angle this is to ensure that it's facing the correct like it's facing upward correctly as well as you know like it's the correct length like in front of my player Comma zero, comma zero, right? Then you're gonna parent it to grimoire dot parent is equal to character dot left hand, right? Then we're going to set up the animation track to equip it. So at is equal to character dot humanoid dot animator load animation in parentheses put script dot find your animation hold animation enter then at we want to play the animation track. Let me scroll down a little bit. Then we're gonna access the sound service and find our equip sound play it then we're going to set up a function so that we know when that the player has unequipped the unequipped the grimoire so that uh we'll know to um stop playing the animation so we're going to say character dot left hand dot child removed right so this function will trigger whenever a child has been removed from the grimoire i mean from sorry from the player's uh left hand and then we'll say if not grimoire equipped which means the player no longer has a grimoire equipped then we'll stop playing the animation track right then we're going to skip i think it's like three yeah it's three ends then we're going to throw an else if we're going to say else if input this is so this is the spell code so it's equal to input dot key code is equal to an enum dot key code dot one so let's say like e is to equip the grimoire but then like the number numbers are to use the spell so like one two three four or whatever right enter and then we'll say if grimoire equipped Boom. So if the grimoire is, you know, equipped, then um we're going to get the end position for the fireball attack. So end position is equal to player gets mouse dot hit dot position. Then we're gonna fire the remote event, magic event, fire server in quotation marks, but the name of the event should be spell one, comma, then send over the end position. Then I'm going to um oh, actually no, that's actually it. Actually, yeah, that is it. As long as the grimoire is equipped, then the spell should work. Um, and then yeah, let's move on to the server side. Let me just double check to make sure. Okay, we are good. Now head on over to uh, server script service. Click the plus icon. Insert a server script. Rename said script to magic script. In parentheses, put server. Then we're going to delete print hello world. We're going to make a couple variables. We can actually save ourselves some time and, and come back here and copy and paste this. Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V, and then just change some things first. Change the first one to TS, this is the tween service. Leave the second one, then we'll change the last one to, oh my fault, change the last one to DS, and then uh, OK. I don't know what I'm doing, clearly. Then debris, and then lastly, we need the magic event. So select it, Control C, Control V, boom. Then let's start setting up the function for the hitbox. We're going to say game dot players that player added connect function in parentheses put PLR to show for the player who joined. Enter then set up the next function player dot character added can connect function in parentheses put character. Enter. Then we're going to set up the hitbox. Local hitbox is equal to instance dot new in quotation marks part. Then let's start setting the properties. Hitbox dot name is equal to hitbox. Enter hitbox dot massless is equal to true. Hitbox dot anchored is equal to false. Hitbox dot can collide is equal to false. Hitbox dot transparency is equal to one unless you're testing. 
hitbox.size is equal to vector3.new. In parentheses, you're going to put 5, 6, 2.5. Enter. Hitbox.color is equal to color3.new, 1, 0, 0. So red for when you're testing. We're going to set it C frame. Hitbox pivot to character dot humanoid root par dot c frame then we're going to set up the world constraint so well we're going to weld it to the character humanoid root part so it's equal to instance dot new weld constraint then set the properties world constraint dot part zero is equal to hitbox world constraint dot part one is equal to character dot humanoid root part part zero hitbox part yeah okay and then um, we're going to set the world constraints parents, so parent it to the hitbox. Then we're going to set the hitbox parent to the characters, humanoid root, okay, clearly I don't know how to spell, humanoid root part, boom, right? So we're going to leave it like that. We're done with the first function, now on to the second, which is the actual combat one. So we're going to say magic event that on server events, connect function, in parentheses, put PLR, which is for the player, comma, event type, comma, arg, one sure for argument number one, enter, create a variable for the player's character, local character is equal to player dot character, set up an if statement, so if event type is equal to, we'll say spell one, enter, um, we're going to first get the start position, so start position is equal to character dot, I guess it would make more sense to do the left hand, since that's what it was, because originally I had a right hand, but it doesn't really matter. So we're going to say left hand dot position, then get the end position, which we already sent over. End position is equal to R1, then calculate the direction, which is end position minus start position. On the outside, you're going to do dot unit, and I forgot the equal sign, boom, right? Then we're going to calculate the duration, duration is equal to, in parentheses, same thing, end position minus start position. On the outside, do dot magnitude, divide this by 60, adjust the number as need be if it's if the fireball is going too fast or too slow. Then we're going to clone over the fireball from server storage. So we're going to say fireball clone is equal to game the server storage fireball clone. Then we're going to say fireball clone pivot to character dot right hand dot C frame. Then fireball clone dot parent is equal to workspace, right? Then we're going to set up the fireball tween. I'm going to say local fireball tween is equal to ts create. And then we're going to put the fireball clone comma tween info dot new. Of course, put the duration comma enum dot easing style. I went with cubic comma enum dot easing direction is of course out. All right, then comma, special brackets, position is equal to end position. Then, of course, we're going to play the tween, right? Then um, we're going to also play the fireball sound effect, play. Then I'm going to set up the raycast. So we're going to say raycast params is equal to raycast params dot new, raycast params dot filter type is equal to enum dot raycast filter type dot exclude then raycast params dot filter descendants instances is equal to special brackets character get descendants right and then we're going to cast array we're going to say local ray cast is equal to workspace to ray cast start position comma direction times um since since it is a range attack do a pretty decently a decently big number so 20 for me then raycast parameters so it's been if statement so if raycast and raycast.instance if it makes contact with an instance and if that instance's name is equal to a hitbox right then enter create a variable for the person the player's enemy character so enemy character is equal to raycast.instance.parent.parent then we're going to damage them. So enemy character dot humanoid dot health is less than or equal to however much damage you want to do. I'm just put 10. Then I'm going to set up a 4 of pierce loop to give the enemy a damaged effect, like I'm going to make their uh, body red for a little, just a little, like a split second. So for I comma V in pairs, you're going to say, enemy, make sure you do enemy character, not regular character. Enemy character, get children, right? Enter if V is a mesh part, so for R15, or V is a regular part, which is for R6, right? Then we're going to set up the tweens. Um, you can really just copy and paste the fireball tween. Control C, Control V, save ourselves some time. Then just rename this to uh, 
damage tween control c control v then you're going to change the instance to v the duration will be 0 0.4 that's not 0 0.4 0 0.4 seconds um exponential remains out uh we're adjusting the color so color is equal to of course red color three dot new um one comma zero comma zero and then also the transparency so transparency is equal to 0 0.5 right and then we're going to go after this um we're going to say task dot wait 0 0.1 seconds to save ourselves some time just copy and paste the entire thing control c control v then this time this is going to be the second damage tween so there were two at the end right and then this time you're going to set the duration to 0 0.3 seconds change the direction to in the color is going to go back to the original gray so 0 0.6 0.6.6 so back to gray transparency will be set back to zero right so that's second damage tween and then lastly after the three ends we're going to use the debris service so ds add item fireball clone comma duration so it's just so we make sure we ensure it was destroyed and yeah, just like that, we have finished setting everything up. Let's go ahead and test to make sure everything works. As always, if you guys want access to any one of my scripts or models, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Link to either one of those options can be found in the description. Highly recommend that. And yeah, okay. So first things first, if I press E, boom, you guys hear the sound. You see the animation. You know, I have an animation like I'm holding the book and like I'm thinking to myself what spell I want to use. If I press E, I put it away, press E again, boom, it comes back. So if I press 1, you guys see I can shoot a fireball attack. Yeah, you hear the sound. Um, so I guess technically I did want to test it on NPC. So if you want to test it, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to click play. Hold on. Go back, click play, find, open up your character. Human and root part. You guys should know the drill by now. Copy the hitbox, avatar, rig builder, block avatar, drop it down, go into it, right click on the human and root part, paste into, find the world constraint, go down part one, human and root part, go to the hitbox make it so that it's not transparent or at least fully not transparent so you can see adjust as need be you're going to move this down so it covers the rig make it transparent again and now we can play and we can test this isn't really relevant to the magic system it's just more of just testing if the spell works so boom it's doing damage or sometimes at least. there we go sometimes at least but yeah Actually, what actually would probably be better, honestly, is if I did the human. Now that I think about it, I think actually I know why it's doing that. Hold on. No, never mind. I don't know. Anyway, but yeah. So cool attack. If you guys enjoyed the video, definitely leave a like, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, definitely. Um, let me know if you guys, whatever you guys want to see. I don't really know. I don't really care. Just let me. Like I'm saying, like I, I don't care what it is. Just like say, you know, leave your ideas in the comments and stuff, and I'll let you know if like I'm interested in doing it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, definitely leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving if you celebrated it and stuff. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.